Assalamu alaikum. I'm Imam Dai Abdullah, the director of LGBT Outreach Program at Muslims for Progressive Values. In this video, we are going to talk about our understanding of gender and sexual orientation in the Abrahamic faiths, especially how LGBTQIA Muslims are characterized and marginalized within the religious communities during the different time periods and the collective anti-LGBTQIA attacks in secular society today. In Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all have similar viewpoints about male homosexuality and how that plays out in various parts of the communities. But when it comes to female homosexuality, there hasn't been a lot of discussion around the subject. In the Muslim community, this further gets complicated when we deal with transgender issues. That said, there are clear points throughout the Muslim history to give us enough information to come to conclusions about things that relate to sexuality and gender. When we look at gender and sexuality in the 7th century, we need to look at what the society was like. Prophet Muhammad lived in a patriarchal society. For example, we know from history that although his wife had her own business, she needed to go through men to run her business effectively. In fact, that is how they met because he was hired to run her business. With that type of society in mind, we can understand why lesbians have been left out by later generations in their quest to punish those who have sexual relationships outside of the traditional marriage between a man and woman. As far as we know, there have not been any executions or other punishments towards lesbians at that time. That said, it has been suggested by various scholars that there are four types of genders recognized by Islam, and they are male, female, hermaphrodites, and a rather confusing fourth gender. This fourth gender, which is termed muhannith, can be similar to cross-dressers male to female transgenders or female to male transgenders. During the Islamic Golden Age, sexual and gender minorities flourished in various parts of the Muslim world. Whether it was in the Arab world, in the Persian community, or in Southern Europe, Muslim men and women in sexual and gender minority communities were able to freely move about without too much religious restriction having placed upon them by the mainstream or the heteronormative society. As we have discussed before, male homosexuality has had a hostile place in the history of Islam in various parts of the world due to various factors, including previous cultures. But there have been very little written about female homosexuality which gave homosexual women a lot more room to roam, so to speak. Recently, thanks to some young scholars, we are learning more and more about female homosexuality in the Muslim world, especially in the Islamic Golden Age. For example, we know during that period there was a culture of gumeliyat, a phenomenon in which slave girls cross-dressed as boys, sometimes even with painted mustaches. This phenomenon began during the reign of Caliph Al-Amin because his mother wanted to deter him from his homosexuality. But, of course, Zubaydah, the mother of Al-Amin, never intended to start a lesbian sexual revolution. This type of sexual revolution continued later into the culture, where it can now be seen throughout Arab literature of that period. For example, we have the stories of female warriors and Amazons, many of which are clearly lesbian stories since they cross-dress and are in the company of other females. The all-female Isles of Wak el Wak, for example, is a story that is buried in tales about men. On the other hand, other females in other stories, such as the ones found in the epic of Dat el Hima, actually voiced their lack of interest in men. 
Similarly, lesbian or lesbian-like behavior in this period has been extensively covered in the Arab literature. For example, one Abbasid historian in the 10th century wrote about famous female slaves who were entertainers for other women of high-class society. Despite not having been termed lesbian, we know these slave girls entertained the upper-class ladies with various activities of entertainment, including sexual. In the modern times, gender played more of an issue for lesbian women than did their lesbianism. As subjects under the various colonial powers, they had more problems to deal with as women than they did as lesbians. For example, the British Empire didn't have any laws against female homosexuality, which allowed lesbian women in the Muslim communities to move about just as they did before. However, because of the restrictions placed upon women, they now had to deal with other issues. As the modern times continues, we see more and more gender inclusion in Islamic texts. It is not just texts anymore, it is also some amazing things happening in some places. In the 20th century, for example, something interesting has happened in Iran after the overthrow of the Shah. The Shia leaders instituted laws in place to protect transgender people despite Iran being very homophobic and having been accused of executing many gays. Iran, having been singled out as one of the best countries for trans Muslims, has to do with the fact that the country allows for transgender people to legally change their sex, both in their bodies and in their documents. Unfortunately, what has been great for the transgender community of Iran has become tragic for the male homosexual community of Iran. Society has moved in the opposite direction when it comes to male homosexuality, and a lot of male homosexuals have begun to take the route of sexual reassignment surgery in hopes of finding love in their lives. This tragedy, of course, does not take away the good news for transgendered people in Iran, but it does highlight the intersectionalities of those issues in our communities. In conclusion, we must recognize these communities come from patriarchal backgrounds. We have talked about before the fact that male homosexuality had long been seen as something detrimental to the growth of the community. But when we are looking at female homosexuality, things are not as clear cut. As we have seen, female homosexuals were able to get away with a lot more than their male counterparts, mainly because their lives were not seen as being a threat to the future growth of the community. On the other hand, when we look at the issue of transgender persons, we can see how their struggles are very much intertwined with those of the homosexual community. This type of common interest should lead males, females, male homosexuals, female homosexuals, and transgender persons to work together for a common cause.